we're running out of saws, friends. We are running out of saws that aren't in a state of disrepair. Uh, we'll save it for another video, but uh, a fan favorite. Oh, I might have a serious ailment. I mean, I got I got chainsaw problems here. But don't worry, there's something coming in the mail that's uh, that's gonna fix that. Well, actually, a better maintenance program will fix that. If you guys aren't familiar with this, because you're new to the channel, well, <sighs> gigantic Dolmar. It's not for the faint of heart. And I was already trying to start it. It wasn't going that good. I got some fuel in it now, though. Oh, man, I'll tell you. I'm going to put that down. So, I mean, this saw didn't get rebuilt. You saw in the video, it just... It just got put back together, is all. Of course it was firing right up. Choke, probably got too much fuel now. I'm gonna get a screwdriver. We gotta fix that. The kill switch doesn't work either. You gotta choke it out. But I, I'm gonna get a, we'll get a screwdriver. That, uh, that idle's too rowdy. Much more polite now. Good girl. So three, three jets, right? Low speed, high speed, and then one labeled S for idle adjustment. And uh, I did dink with a little bit before when we put it back together. And I, I just kind of left it where it was set up, to be honest. It ran so good once we got it running that, um, you know, the guy before it gotten her in the sweet spot, but I think I adjusted the idle screw at some point. So anyways, why do we even need a chainsaw when we have a sawmill? Well, as advertised, they'll cut a 16 foot length, but uh, I'm telling you, she's tight. It's a little of a tight fit. So it, I'd actually, unless you actually needed 16 foot lumber, I'm not gonna cut any of my saw logs to 16 feet no more. Um, I thought what I needed these for a project for that I was gonna require 16 foot and I still might, I'm not 100% sure that'll be shared in a later project with some uh, timber frame action, but they're hard to manage. It's hard on everything. They're hard to wheel, they're hard to, they're harder on the tractor because all the leverage on the loader. And um, honestly, it's just, just as far as the mill will reach. So you're better off to cut them short. If you just want eight foots, cut eight foot uh, logs. Or eight foot six, you know, don't, don't leave yourself shy. That's what I'm learning anyways. Uh, but you're real drawn. If you're like me, you go, well, it'll cut 16 foot. Well, I'm going to cut a 16 footer. That's what I've been doing, struggling along. So anyways, let's get this trim back to where she needs to be, and we'll cut it. So what I've been doing is marking them at, uh, well, usually like 16 foot 6, but that puts us right on top of the bunk. I want to be able to cut all the way through. So like 16 4, don't, don't cut your tape measure off. Right there. So people always ask me, why do you always buy all them? axe heads and stuff and every axe and hatchet you find at a garage sale well because you know that's hand now this is the sawmill hatchet it can just stay here i don't have to worry about needing it somewhere else because i got 25 more i've been cutting the butt end off too uh you know trying to utilize as much as possible of the wood but to what you end up with on uh, on these big spruce trees is they got quite a flare at the butt and i think uh you know realistically guy could have fell them about a foot higher and then you just be into the straight you know it kind of straightens out pretty fast and then you could have just left that chunk of that bell there for a chunk of firewood cut the stump flush but uh well you know i tried to scavenge as much as possible plus it gets rid of the the hinge wood there there's a different way to fall trees if you're looking to cut lumber out of them so you end up with a nice square butt instead of the dirty old hinge wood but uh, you know i'm a student here you know what are you going to do? See that? That saw's got enough power to overcome the chain break. cut that off and it didn't even fall oh 
Oh. You gotta really take time in life to appreciate the simple things like that. I didn't have to bend down and pick it up, unlike the other block that I dropped. Beautiful. This in a video yet, but we did end up with toolboxes on the mill. Toolbox one, toolbox two, identical, matching set. Not yet bolted down, they're just sitting there. They need a little work, but uh, they matched, you know, and that's important here on the Spruce Stopper YouTube channel. You know, looks, looks are everything. Don't let the world tell you otherwise. You know, if it isn't sexy, well, it's probably not gonna work that good. All right, I'm gonna share another thing I've learned here in my milling travels. These stakes that are intended to butt your log up against, these ones, I'm gonna take one out here. You got a little pin on them, right here like that on the flat side. And that pin matches the thickness of the tubing. See, making it flush. So if you're milling a flat edge timber that's already squared, like a cant or a board that you're taking the edge off, you got them this way, works good, because you butt it up against this piece of the bunk and then it butts up against that pin. But if you're in the case where, uh, you know, the old log still has curvature to it, we flip them around this way. And that way, when you're rolling the log with the cant hook, rolling it over to get it positioned, then it's not grabbing on this sharp edge and digging in. It allows it to ride down the slope and, uh, and it doesn't get jammed up so bad. Little things, uh, little things. I mean, that seems obvious, but I have made the mistake a couple times and got it in the wrong order. And then you're just fighting yourself. That thing ain't right. wants to lay well, I ain't gonna go nowhere anyways so we're probably just gonna mill the top off want to get her squared down and uh, see where we get from there but uh, that's a pretty good start so I had a pretty good look at this log first it looks deadly straight when it's the ground but as you can see it's just got a bit of a crown to it which is okay because at the skinny end it kind of balances out and if you look down here straight 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 but in the bottom we have quite a bit of that bell from the butt left over and then if you look underneath at the bunks touching touching and then right there not really touching on those two there's a bit of a hump there so kind of looked it over best i could and uh then we're just going to cut that curve out and still get what we need out of this to utilize it i'm trying to get the least amount of scrap possible that has given me great satisfaction when the scrap pile is virtually just a little bit of bark pieces makes the guy feel real good now of course i'm just learning this from what i saw uh, you know other guys on youtube what a wonderful resource channels like out of the woods and a few other i mean a few other seems like everybody and their mother's got a sawmill but it's not as easy as it looks. Got a little assortment of tools I've been keeping here. This worked out good here. That just, they don't fall down. They just sit in there. I got a wrench. Because what another thing has snagged me is milling a variety of diameter of logs is uh, you get the uh, blade adjustment, the blade guide adjusted for the smaller stuff. You get in a rhythm doing that. And then some of these logs that we've gathered up here they got a real taper to them. Loosen off. You'll get halfway through the cut and realize that uh, indeed the saw guide is too close to the log. And uh, well, this this little fella here, this copper lube tube at the end, that's fallen victim more than one time and got pinched off because of that. Uh, so just get her pulled out. And then all I do is I just eyeball down the log and hope for the best that I've got it pulled out far enough. But my understanding is tighter the better, obviously. The more support that blade has, the better the cut. And I'll tell you, other than zipping, uh, I zipped one of the, the log bunks over there, not bunk, but the stake. I zipped that with a, a blade. I had massacred it immediately. It didn't cut shit after that. The last two by four I cut after I nipped that little bit of metal, it looked like a, Looked like a rainbow off the Lucky Charms box there. It had quite a curve to it. So uh, we're actually running. We're actually running. This is real fancy. This is where it gets real fancy. That's carbide tipped. 
Are we running carbide tip because we're fancy around here? Nope, we're running carbide tip because that's good. Come in the box. Wait, look at this. Whilst we were looking, this broke. This is a recent thing. There, the top of it is right in there. And this spring is broken. So where this used to hook up to was here. And it was a an idle return. So it, it would shut the fuel all the way off and go back. So we're gonna have to replace that spring because it, it needs it to function properly. Let's go see what we got. I made a Thought with Scott video a couple week or week or two ago about uh, it's better to be a hoarder, you know, jokingly of course, but uh, well, in that video, lo and behold, we had a whole box of springs. Man, I'll tell you, some things in the world, they just work out. Cause you go, well, what am I ever gonna need that for? And I almost didn't take this box of springs. That is why you might need it. See what, let's see what we can find. How do you like that? It's a little longer, but the spring rate is a little bit different. So I think it'll, it'll even out. How do you like that, man? I, I'm glowing right now. I am flipping glowing right now. You know, people save all this stuff and they go, what are you saving it for? This is why. I don't need to explain any further than that. Did you see me get in my truck and drive to a hardware store? No, because you couldn't have bought that there anyways. I had it here. I had it here at my own personal Home Depot. I'll see if this isn't gonna do what we need it to do here. Chances are pretty good, so that'll hook in there. And that end will hook in there. Maybe a little more leverage if we hooked it out here. That might work a little better for us. There's another hole here. Let me get a little more tension on it. That's better. Oh yeah, that returns it right now. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell ya. What a thing of beauty. And a better quality spring too. Some about the shininess of this metal that uh, gives it that uh, not so good feel. And don't worry, I'm not gonna throw this spring away either. I'm gonna put the broken spring back in the box because there was a whole bunch of them in there like this with the one end up off. You can bend the ends up on these springs, um, but the, the metal is so brittle that when you do bend it in any fashion, it fatigues it and falls apart. So I'm gonna dink with this carb and fuel setup just a little bit more. And then uh, we might just have to live with it for today because there's supposed to be thunder clouds rolling in and uh, well, you've watched enough videos. I'm fairly sweet and uh, I melt in the rain. Look at that. I forgot that was in the box of the springs. Future video, what do you think? This is a quite a unique wood chisel. Needs a handle. We'll see what we can do. You know how it goes. Adventures, adventures around every corner. In addition to fuel, oh, don't rain all over everything. The old mill, she's a thirsty girl for the lube tank. Nothing the wife's watering can won't fix up. Whether it's right or wrong, this is what I've been doing with these bigger logs. What we're trying to get out of them is eight by eights for support posts. I went with eight by eights because, well, it just sounds better than a six by six. It's got that beefy feel to it. The problem, the old Timber Thunder, it'll comfortably cut 
six inches deep. It doesn't have enough room in the throat there for height to cut an eight by eight. So instead of being able to drop down and cut your eight by eight and keep working your way through the log, you have to cut, how would I word this? You gotta cut your eight by eight from the top. So get it, get it where you want on the bottom, flip the log over and then cut you know, your excess material at the top so you're left with that eight by eight. Whereas if it was a six by six, I could just simply drop that down six inches, you know, right now, zip it through, and we got our six by six and we could go on from there. So a little different approach to get the eight by eights. I still got 13 inches at the top end here. So what I was, have been doing, and I keep saying have been, if somebody's watching that knows better than me, that would be great. I'm dropping her down two inches. So this will be slab. I can just set it off to the side. And I usually on these big logs have ended up with one or two of these, you know, two inch slabs, but it's kind of a wonky shape. Still got to, you know, bark and wane on both sides of it. Well, I just flipped them back up in the mill uh, vertically and then uh, just cut uh, whatever I can get out of them after that. Usually two by six, two by eight, um, whatnot. I haven't been bothering with one by, I, I don't think I got much of a use for it. And I've been cutting true to dimension too. So, you know, two by four is actually two by four inch for, for what I'm doing. It actually causes a lot of other problems, you know? Um, if I cut them at an inch and a half, because there's a few sp places in this build that I'm planning that I wanted to use traditional hardware, um, or you know, or not traditional, but regular old hardware, joist hangers and whatnot. But you cut them full two inch, that ain't gonna happen. So I guess that's forced our hand. We're keeping it old school and uh, gonna have to do it a different way. So I'm gonna drop that down two inches, get that out. And then we should be able to take uh, the sides off, get us a cant out of it, and uh, seek out our 8x8 and uh, what other other lumber a guy can find. So you got to keep track of where you're at so you know where are the two inch marks. So we were at 13 and 5 8. We dropped that down to 11 and 5 8. And that's going to get us a two inch. And you just have an eyeball look. Does that look right? That's because you're not at it. You're looking at the wrong thing. See, it always pays to double check. There, that's 11 to 5 eighths. All right, let's do it. It also pays to like triple, quadruple check that uh, none of the log dogs are suffering the way. It's a good way to go through a lot of blades. I'll show you what I mean by real tight at the 16 footers. I was pretty well tight against the guards with the, the top of the tree. I couldn't really push it that much further in. And uh, so I cut it at 16 foot four. So you got a little wiggle room for squaring. And look it, just shy, just shy. But we can just go like this. There we go, free. I, I've been pretty good. I could have scooched it that, I could have scooched it that way a hair, but uh, I don't know, it just adds to the excitement. What a gorgeous piece of wood. So you can see. got wildly sidetracked there I had the so from the 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 cleanup video uh, where we were cleaning up all the stuff from my grandpa's old property you'll remember there was a green Onan generator uh, that was part of the pickings that we brought home to sell so it didn't get scrapped sold and the beauty of it not only sold but sold it to a guy from the neighborhood that uh, actually knows my grandpa, know my family for, uh, well, I, they've been kicking around since I can remember. And uh, ambitious fella, 
a real maverick. He's gonna take. We we hooked it up. We hooked uh, we hooked it up to their Volkswagen Jetta with a pair of jumper cables. Whirled her over a couple more times. Black smoke shot out a little bit. He was thrilled. He's taken the two-cylinder diesel off of that generator to put in uh, his Komatsu excavator. Isn't that something? Uh, anyways, he had done the research and he uh, he figures he's gonna give her a go. Either way, I love the ambition and I love that it didn't go to waste. So a lot of my sawmill in here is uh, just comes down to luck. So I milled that top, the slab, which man, I just want to show you how proud I am of this slab, uh, scrap material, okay? See that? Nothing but bark. It's not even an inch thick. There's just nothing that we're going to waste. And then it just worked out. So now this is 10 inches thick. I'm going to mill another 2 by off the top throw her with this so we can get all our two by sixes and two by eights out of that no waste and then we have our uh, our the makings of our eight by eight so uh, we'll see what we can get out of get out of her maybe a couple more two by sixes but some of it just comes down to luck you know i need luck to be on my side that should be good We'll leave them that way so we can roll the log and a guy just keeps a real mindful eye on what height they're set at and we'll get this rolled over. Now, whether it's necessary or not, I threw a square on the mill and uh, I've been taking the time just to do a double check because when it's up against those uh, stakes, you're like, oh, that's pretty straight up and down. But it's just not quite dialed. And I think... What you guys do with the tape measure? You know, it's rough, and there's nobody else here to blame but myself. Oh yeah, there we go. One, two, tape measures and pencils. I don't know where they go, but they go. All right, kind of down to the wane here, we got 11 inches. So, do we just want to roll it now or take a two out of her? I think we cut her. I think we're gonna take a two by. That'll give us a two by eight. We'll get a two by eight, then we'll get our eight by eight, and then we might get a little skin cut off the back. And that pretty much will utilize the whole thing. I think that's what I want to do. Look at that. That is a hulking piece of lumber. That's a beast. That is a beast. Well, it's got quite a bit of weighing on her still. See the bark? But, uh, like I say, like I say, we're in the mode of Waste not, what not. And if this is all you're wasting, that, that. Well, I'd say you're doing pretty dang good by the forest, keeping her, uh, keeping her together. So you see at this end, the lane. But what we're gonna do is go ahead, and we're gonna drop that down to eight inches on the dial, like that. Eight on the eight. So that's gonna leave us with an eight by eight finish done 16 footer. And uh, we're gonna get another two by eight 16 foot out of it and uh, be good decking boards for, uh, for the project ahead. So yeah, doesn't this feel good? Oh, it feels good. Oh, I thought it smells like pine, it's wonderful.
go. I think wrecking the light was enough for one day. I'd put you, put you down. Eight by eight. Close enough for me. You know, I find it's plus or minus a sixteenth or an eighth. Especially on this long stretch, eh, and a 16 footer. I mean, I don't know if guy could ask much better than that out of the setup that I got. The deck needs a little stiffening still. And, uh, you know, it's got a little, it's got a little bounce to it. I think I've settled on a couple more stabilizer jacks in the center uh, to take the bounce out of the tires. But, um, I mean, if we can cut a 16 foot eight by eight within, uh, you know, 16th or an eighth of an inch good enough for the girls we're hanging out with Just got them two slabs left. Don't worry, we're coming back for them. Get that scrap out of the way. Get this. I've been making effort to get it under cover. Now you're gonna shake your head for a second and say, Sprue Stomper, them gotta be, oh, they gotta be piled better and you gotta have stickers in between them so they dry. I get it, I know, trust me. For a slow moving operation. Restacking the lumber is on the agenda. It's temporary. We're a work in progress. try and wrangle the fam in to help me restack this tomorrow It'll only take a second oh don't no, don't look in there is it like, wait a minute that's a big pile of lumber have you been cutting wood without us i have i have kind of what i said uh, when we started this is what i've been ending up with kind of on these bigger logs is uh just a couple of chunks like this we get them lined up and uh I can just mill them together, get them up against the uh, the stakes there, and zip them down. Two by six is what we're after. I need the most of uh, at the moment is two by six. I am pretty sure. I want to try and keep her all in the same realm, and uh, we'll go from there. But a lot more trees yet, so uh, maybe we should try and get two by eights out of them. Bigger's better, isn't it? Uh, looks are deceiving. I, I think all we're gonna get out of her is maybe a couple of two by, a two by six and a two by four maybe. It's bigger than it looks, but that's how it always goes I'm finding with the milling, is uh, you look like you have a tremendous amount of material. In reality, not so much. Takes, that's what's really shocked me about all this. You see, you go to Home Depot and you get a two by 12, that was a very big tree. That was a big tree to get that out of. I mean, that thing we just cut the two, the eight by eight out of, I could have maybe gotten three, maybe two, two, maybe three, two by 12s out of the very center, if that's what you were after. But we're talking a tree, you know, that's it's pretty dang big. We should count the rings out. I don't know how long, how old it is. But um, what I'm trying to say is it takes a long time in our climate to grow a two by 12, so. I don't know, it didn't make you appreciate it that much more, I think.
I think we're wrapping up just in the nick of time though of weather. Sounded like something just fell over. The weather's getting rowdy. We've been having bad storms, so this is all that's left of that great big log. I cut just this, this, cut these just now. One inch strips, we'll cut those into stickers, and uh and that's it. That's all that's left. These two little pieces and uh well, I ain't risking the mill to cut any closer to the, the deck, so that's not so bad. We're gonna get this wrapped up, tools put away. I'll show you what we cut, and then with any luck, we'll get out of here before it rains. Look at the speed on these clouds here. Well, friends, an eight by eight, some stickers, our two 16 foot two by eights, two 16 foot two by sixes and a few odds and sods. Not so bad for a little bit of milling. We got a big old pile now that gotta be sorted. I only got one log left in the deck. So that leaves us with a couple options. We sit on our hands or we go seek out some more wood. I think we're gonna seek out some more wood. I don't know uh, what the next adventure is gonna be, but uh, I know there's gonna be one. And as always, we appreciate you watching. See you next time.